Hello there, everybody! It is me, No Name Omens of Spore, back with the Rhythm Waves 3 as France, where we just got out of a war with Germany and Italy. We got five reparation points as well as having taken Greece for ourselves. Um, which is, of course, worth three. Try to give us just a little bit more uh, Mediterranean power. I considered trying to get Libya, but decided against it. Um, we still got about, you know, we still got 20 years, so we can still try to uh, fight Italy again. 20 years should result in about two to three wars. Maybe three wars and go a little bit past 1970 um, is kind of what I'd expect right now. Um, and there's certainly stuff we could try to grab from Italy, especially after really, really hitting their navy hard. Um, but I need to catch up on technological development at this point, because it's been behind for a bit. Um, you know, research is higher. Or is that research higher again? And, uh, yeah. But, you know, in terms of naval budget, we're still very good. <laughs> you know, we're still basically... We're in the second best position right now behind the U.S. We're ahead of uh, Britain, which is very good. And that's presumably from, the, you know, largely from those war reparations. So, uh, currently, maintenance, we're looking at about 41,000, or currently, I'm about, you know, 10,000 in the red, but I have 15,000 in naval aircraft that I can cut, you know, cut down very heavily, as well as 41,000 in maintenance costs, I can probably cut down almost by half. So I can probably get about 30,000 budget back. On the other hand, there is some stuff that I have to resume. So, let's... Resume everything. Okay, so we're about, you know, 15,000. Ah, uh, 14.6. Yeah, 14.6. Not quite 15,000. We round up to 15,000, but we're not quite there. I think 400 is enough of a difference. That, that's how much we're losing per turn. Right now. With, um, everything still active, and I can just start, uh cutting stuff out. But I wanted to uh wanted to show something first. And that's that I actually decided to sit down and although it's only in Google Docs, uh kinda do an analysis similar to what um R V T does at the uh, end of a lot of his wars. And actually I should probably be checking air groups out here uh pretty soon too, once I'm done with this. So um 1950 to 1956-ish naval plan, and the uh, to-do list on it. First thing's obvious, cut costs by reducing, uh, or by reserving navy and reducing air squadrons. So, you know, reserving mothballing ships in the navy, I think at this point, like, Solly would probably get mothballed right now, um, given that she will need to have a refit before the next war anyways. Finish existing construction and rebuilds. Which, there wasn't actually any existing construction, but there are three existing rebuilds. In terms of Henri the Fourth, Forbin, and Lafayette. Or Lafayette. Um, figure out what needs to be built. Figure out what needs rebuilds. Uh, decide what to do with the halted damage ships, which in this case are Jean Bar, Strasbourg, and Aquaton. Um, more specifically, when to repair them, or if it's even a good idea to repair them before doing a rebuild on them. Because there might... Honest to goodness, right now, this ship being halted, it's got mothballed maintenance and it's keeping an elite crew quality. So there is strong consideration for not actually taking this one off the repairs, or maybe only repairing it for like three months, I don't know. But that might be a little bit too... Uh, too exploitative of game mechanics, although, you know, not that I haven't been doing any... Anything like that. Oh, I forgot to undo the to-do list to show uh, Jean Bart right there. Elite crew quality, Hall to Zetis, maintenance 190, Strasbourg, Aquaton. There are some other damage ships here like Theonville, um, Epu, uh, Kamoy. Yeah. Uh, so, we <clears throat> out what... Or what to do with the damage ships, what lessons need to be learned, and how will warfare change in about six years, which is when I expect the war to be, and, you know, in about 14 years, which is when I'd expect a second war to be. Um, so, 
lessons and predictions. I think the first lesson that's been very clear from this war, missiles are still immature. Heavy anti-surface ship missile barrages can cripple about one to two large units, you know, battleships, heavy cruisers, battle cruisers, that sort of thing, as well as possibly like one to two escorts alongside them, but are not greatly decisive in fleet battles yet. Large gun vessels are still needed. The battleship and battle cruiser are still playing a very important role. And uh, medium, or the medium surface ship missiles, which are right now pretty much exclusively fired from like dive bombers and torp bombers, don't seem to be greatly useful at the moment. Missile reloads are still needed to allow for somewhat sufficient damage to an enemy fleet. Um, I think that was definitely something I was feeling, that the second barrage became pretty important too, so the ships that had reloads were doing better or a bit better. Um, jet cap is highly effective against prop planes. That is one of the things that this war has definitely taught in full. Trying to uh, <clears throat> send out, you know, dive and torpedo bomber squadrons, and even like medium bomber squadrons, to attack aircraft carriers with a heavy, you know, with a heavy cap presence of light jets would just result in those planes getting absolutely mauled. Um, Proper fighter cap is still needed for night. Um, so it's still worthwhile to have some regular propeller fighters just for the night combat. Dive bomber and torpedo bomber strikes aren't greatly effective yet as they get mauled and light jet fighter can't yet carry missiles. So carrier offensive capability is rather limited. Although I think the exception to this might actually be torpedo bombers because they can still fly at night. Um, but... Yeah, it, m it might have been most effective to try to use torpedo bomber night strikes rather than pivot mostly towards the dive bomber, thinking, oh, the dive bomber can do everything well, when in actuality it just gets mauled. So I probably had the wrong carrier strategy this war. For future campaigns at around this, you know, late 40s, early 50s time point, it might be worthwhile to uh, actually pivot more into the torpedo bomber. Missile strikes against carriers are most are their most effective use, but getting to that point with airstrikes is difficult due to the above-mentioned problems, and getting in with surface ships requires the enemy surface fleet to have already been defeated earlier in the war. Um, yes, I don't, I don't think I have much else to say other than what I wrote. Not even much of a bullet point, that's just the conclusion. However, missiles and jets will improve, and I've had... I have actually had some experience in the Missile Age, but not in like a continuous, or not with me continuously at the helm. You know, I've done like 1960 to 1970. Well, not 1960, like 1962 to 1970. However, so missiles and jets will improve. The question is how much in the six years before the next expected war. If I expect the observations to be obsolete by next war, then the first surface ship missile strike should cripple a good chunk of the enemy surface fleet for follow-up strikes or gun duels, and carrier strikes should be important again. But if not, is the, you know, if my observations of this war aren't obsolete or aren't wholly obsolete, by the next one, we're probably looking at somewhat of a repeat of the, you know, of the conclusions reached from this war. You know, they should definitely change by the war after the next one. So, like, six years from now, I'm a little skeptical on uh, how this all will adjust. Fourteen years, it's probably fine. Um, keeping large amounts of outdated... Another lesson less related to missiles. Keeping large amounts of outdated fast hauls around. Um, you know, Emerald Ob, Sully, uh, Strasbourg, Dunkirk, Nantes, Aquitaine, th those sort... Aquaton, those sorts of ships... Um, you know, Victor Hugo, the end game beta. Gets, keeping, large, keeping a large amount of those older hulls around gets expensive during wartime, with no plans to scrap old hulls, which I'm not planning on actually scrapping them. Future wars may force partial activation rather than full, allowing for a better handling of attrition. May even activate old ships in lieu of repairing. Um, I should have said damaged hulls, not old hulls. in lieu of repairing damaged halls and fix all post-war. Which is kind of what I was doing a little bit at the end here. 
So, the thought process here is that if I wind up at war, I don't actually activate the whole navy. This is... Especially not the whole battleship corps, or at least the whole capital ship corps. It will probably be like the whole cruiser corps gets activated. But, you know, this might be something where I'm keeping some of the ships that have some of the slower engines or, you know, underwhelming firepower in, you know, basically in reserve for a good portion of the war and uh, just try to attrit the uh, enemy fleet down. And then maybe I can even rotate, or try to trip the enemy fleet down, move some of, you know, basically activate these ships as they're needed. So, like, if, um, I don't know. I'm going to briefly turn off the new list. So, let's say, like, the same thing happens with the last war, where Italy's reduced down to a single, or a single battlecruiser, or Germany's reduced down to a single battleship. Um... Schwaben got in two battles. Light damage and medium damage. Well, um... Where, you know, it's something like that. Where it's primarily becoming a cruiser war. Um, at that point, it may be less useful to have something like... Or something with really expensive maintenance, like Devastation. In fleet service. And, um, it may be more worthwhile to, like, move Devastation down to the Reserve Fleet and then, you know, activate something like Ruin. Or, you know, the Nancys or Marseille. Um, or even, like, a Strasbourg, Dunkirk, Nancys, or Aquaton. You know, even one of these older ships could probably work at that point. Did I mothball that? Okay, I was just checking on uh, what the funds were like if I mothballed. Um, I don't want to mothball because of that issue. I'll probably try to fix these up and then reserve fleet them. Honestly, thinking about it now. Although, if they retain their speed, in... they might be retaining their speed, too. So it might be worthwhile just holding off on the repairs. Keep the elite crew status. I might do that, because that might be saving me money. Although, what I might do is I might try to get Jean Bar to um, status 1 and then halt her again. Or, you know, I could leave her on status 4 and decide if I want to do a rebuild or not. Um, looking at those now. But yeah, the, the thought process would be, you know, keep these ships in reserve. Like, if I lose some capital ships, congrats, I can activate more. If... You know, it's something where I need cheaper capital ships in service. I can activate some of the old ones in response. Um, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of the thought process there. Um, of only doing a partial activation rather than a full activation is that I can handle attrition. And, you know, even if that's damage ship attrition, like it might just be worth halting repairs, you know, on a larger vessel and then pulling an older one back into service instead of repairing the uh, larger vessel and then in the post-war time period when you know I'm not spending as much budget on everything that's when I get all the ships repaired or even hold off on that for a bit until like you know scheduled refits come up um, yeah and the last thing is torp defense on destroyers is effective Unsure on armament conclusions, although 6-inch seem to work out or work out okay on them. If we are, you know, actually, you know, if we're actually looking at the list, I know in one of those last battles, I think we lost one of the Pocono class, but these don't have any torp defense. Um, it really did seem like the larger destroyers with the proper torpedo defense when taking, like, a minor torpedo hit, would often survive. Um, or even that one... I think the Sabres do have torpedo defense, right? Yeah, they do. Um, when, uh... Boussier rammed that, uh... Rammed that German destroyer, like, she was hard... She was barely damaged from it. So... Yeah, um, apparently a good idea to, uh, 
you know, invest in torpedo defense on destroyers. I think that's definitely one of the one of the conclusions that this war has given me. Um, and of course, yeah, but I, I don't know on armament. It did seem like the the Fantastique class six inch autoloaders worked out pretty well, and I think some of the German destroyers with six inch guns were actually quite deadly. So um, looks like six inch as a primary armament for large destroyers is probably a good idea. Um, from what I'm get or from what I'm getting at. So, Navy stat or the Naval Status Report. Ships and refit. Henri the Fourth, six months out. Forbin, ten months out. Lafayette, two months out. And if I go to ships under construction, obviously you can see that. Damaged ships with halted repairs, as I've covered multiple times. Jean Bar, Strasbourg, and Aquaton. Um, you know, four months, one month, and one month, as you can see here. There are other damaged ships in the Navy, but their repairs aren't halted. Although maybe I will consider, maybe I will consider halting them to save a little bit of money. Um, missile ship conversion status. So for the battle cruisers and battleships, Strasbourg, Toulouse, Paris, and Triumphant all need updates still. These ships do not currently have missiles. Um, Paris and Triumphant, I think, were. They might, I'm trying to remember if they were refit just a little bit before, like, missiles were being added to everything, or if that was something where, it, yeah, they, they might have been going under, like, under a big refit when I got missile technology. Um, but they don't have missiles, Toulouse doesn't have any missiles, and I know Strasbourg, I was getting too close to war and I just needed to do a refit on her to, uh, get her up to date, and I couldn't really get the anti-surface ship missiles on her, and she could only, I think she could only carry two anyways. Um, so, he cruiser wise, or heavy cruiser wise, all heavy cruisers have missiles on them, that goes from Admiral Ob to Algerie. Um, all 12 I have in service have missiles, so the heavy cruisers right now are updated with missiles. For light cruisers, only a small percentage of them actually got missiles. Um, only in, or only, uh, Jurien de la Gravier, Forbin, and the Dugoy Trois class. Um, probably not needed for the DeVoe and maybe Cosmo classes, but, um, you know, would be a good idea to get on the rest, and you can, you can see that here. You know, we got missiles on that one, uh, Forbin's rebuilding with them. Probably don't need them on these anti-aircraft cruisers, but, you know, you got the Trout class, probably use them. The Degoy Trois did get missiles, um, but, you know, the Eilis don't, the Chateralnuts don't, um, the Emile Bertins don't, which probably requires another rebuild for, for them, and of course the Devoe class doesn't. I'll check if there's any room on the Devo class or not for uh, torpedoes, but these are primary, you know, primarily anti-aircraft cruisers. For destroyers under one third of the, I, I did math it out. Under one third of the destroyer fleet, or the the fleet destroyer fleet, so like less than one third of the fleet destroyers have been rebuilt to be armed with missiles. Need to update most to all to the standard, and what shouldn't should be an eight, and what isn't should be an anti-aircraft build. And if you actually want to take a look at the destroyer list, um, so you know, Foconos and Peaks don't have it. Uh, the last remaining Merican class has it, um, as well as the Turig and Epe class. The Mosquito. And the Mosquito class doesn't, the LeDroit class does, Frances class doesn't, the Saber and Protec classes do, and nothing after that does. Um, actually, maybe I miscounted because I included these, but... You, you get the gist. A lot. There are a lot of ship... You know, there's a lot of destroyers which really don't have the missiles they need. Um, in terms of what needs rebuilds... All, you know, pretty much all anti-submarine warfare destroyers, other than maybe the Tem ah, the Tempete class is starting to get to that point. But yeah, 
all of the anti-submarine warfare craft do, and most corvettes, but I can alternatively postpone this. One half of the uh, Emile Bertin class, possibly all to the same standard. Um, really, I have two choices here. Either I update or I rebuild three of the Emile Bertin class to the same standard as the other three, and then later on refit all six of them with missiles. Or I take the three which aren't updated and rebuild them with uh yeah and rebuild them with missiles but then basically have two you know two separate um versions of the CLM over 10 class um and aside from that the Amaral Cecil and Chaturolnut um all or Chaturolnut uh cruisers do need to be updated to the same standard as the rest of their classes as in both cases um the later ship in the class needed another rebuild as it got damaged and I needed to save money. Um, Sully is going to need a refit during this period because her machinery has slowed down to 26 knots. The Focono and Peak classes will be rebuilt to anti-submarine warfare destroyers. I think they are at this point old enough to remove them from mainline fleet destroyer duty. Um... The Francisque Tiger, Escapet, and Flamberge class are going to need machinery rebuilds very soon. Um, are going to need machinery rebuilds. And fleet carriers, other than the Jaffra class, to angled flight decks, decks with uh, jet capability. And frankly, the Jaffra class is also going to need jet capability, because they've not actually been rebuilt with it. They just have the angled flight deck. Um... And then, we'll need rebuild soon, I should probably do this. Um, soon machinery, unless straight, stated otherwise, so... Just, sorry, getting that sorted out. Uh, the Clemenceau class... Richelieu, or... Yeah, Clemenceau's, Richelieu, Strasbourg, Dunkirk, Aquitant, Marseille, Nancy, Admiral Ob. Um... You know, at some point, probably within these six years, these ships are gonna need, uh, engine rebuilds. Or at least be approaching it, um, as some of them are starting to slow down. But Emeril Ob, uh, Leon Gimbetta, and Victor Hugo are two very interesting ones, because I'm considering a full rebuild of these ships, and if I get rid of the to-do list. Now, if we're looking at, you know, if we're looking at the four older cruisers, so Ob, Sully, Leon Gimbetta, and Victor Hugo, um... Ob and Sully wound up getting this sort of rebuild to an all center line 8 inch layout, allowing them 12, I think all auto loading um, 8 inch guns to a broadside. Um, because these ships were originally built with 7 inch guns, and, um, or 7 inch guns spam a bunch on the edges, and, you know, this was a more efficient layout. However, uh, Leon Gambetta and Victor Hugo were originally built with 8 inch guns and have a hexagonal layout. Which means that they're not particularly efficiently using their tonnage, given the uh, location of these turrets. You know, if they were efficiently using their tonnage, you'd probably either have an ABXY or, you know, an ABXQY, or, you know, maybe even something identical to Ob and Sully, where you do have those two centerline turrets. So I am definitely considering you know, major rebuilds to Leon Gimbetta and Victor Hugo, similar to what happened to Amaro Ob and Sully, you know, back, was that 10, 20 years ago at this point? But, you know, those two, like, a full heavy cruiser layout. Um, and then Latouche Treville's coming up on that, the Penleve class is coming up on the uh, engine rebuild, which, you know, I did also mention that uh, that one probably does need the angled flight deck rebuild as well. So that's probably coming soon. The Cosmo class uh, needs a refit. The Trout or Cosmo Trout, Dugoy Trois class, probably coming up on rebuilds. Um, the then the destroyers of the Catapult and Cutlass class or the Catapult class coming up, and then the Cutlass class needs um, radar and anti-aircraft guns as an update. Though those did not get 
properly updated because they were still fairly new ships, but um, tech just kind of very quickly superseded them. Construction report. There is no current new construction. No scrapping of current classes is planned. So, you know, quick things I had to say there. Priorities for constructing ships of certain classes. Battleships, very low priority. I have an adequate amount and warfare is pivoting to missiles with big guns to finish off gripples. I really don't need more battleships, especially when I'm operating, you know, Devastation, Alsace, Clemenceau, Normandy, Richelieu, Jean Bar, and Corbet, and, you know, Paris Triumphant. Like, every battleship I've built since 1923 is still relevant. I have a good core of nine battleships, and if you want to throw Toulouse in there too, like a very, very good core of ten battleships, and, you know, then I have an additional lower half of that force that's still somewhat adequate, but, you know, a little bit underwhelmingly armed or a little underwhelming in terms of speed. Uh, that, that's including battle creases too. So yeah, battleship priority, very low. I do not expect to be building any battleships in this period unless there is an event that forces it. For battle cruisers, um, the priority is low. I do have enough battle cruisers. The problem is all of them are dated. The latest battle cruiser I have is uh, Toulouse, and she completed in 1921. She is a would that be like a 29 year old ship at this point, almost 30 year old ship. So I could see an argument for getting like you know two, maybe up to four, 32 or 33 knot battle cruisers, but it's not a vital need. Um, Heavy cruiser priority is medium. I, the thing with my heavy cruiser core is that I do have very strong... Well, I typically have stronger heavy cruisers or larger heavy cruisers. Um, so, you know, Admiral Ob, Sully, Leon Gavetta, Victor Hugo, as well as Algerie Torville and St. Louis, like, tonnage-wise are equivalent to about, you know, two heavy cruisers each. Um, but the issue is, you know, Obsoli, Gambetta, and Hugo are very old ships at this point, so it's kind of inflating the count, and, you know, I only have 12 heavy cruisers. I don't exactly have a lot. Um, so there is definitely a consideration for building heavy cruisers during this time period, but it's not necessarily something that I'm going to go after. But it, it's a consideration, I'll see. Especially if I get, like, a Build 10 Cruisers event. That might actually be some heavy cruisers. Light cruisers, low priority. I have a lot. Kind, I kind of honestly have too many. Because um, I've been, I, you know, I just got so many of the, oh, Build Us Cruisers events. So you get the Degoy Trois class and you get the Devoe class. Um... The male Bertins, I'm trying to remember if they were part of that or not, but I did just kind of build some uh, modern CLs at 1.2. But yeah, I got a lot of CLs. I'm not really needing a greatly expanded uh, light cruiser fleet. Aircraft carriers. Uh, aircraft carriers are a high priority right... Or more fleet carriers are a high priority right now. Um, new carriers are constantly needed, especially super carriers. Might aim for one lay down every two years, or two lay down every three years. Somewhere around that. Um, short answer is, I do have a good, you know, I do have a good core of, like, 12 fleet carriers right now. But, you know, only four of those are, like, into proper, like, jet super carrier size. Um, the rest of those are kind of small. <clears throat> and it's like, yeah, I do, or, you know, I do, I, I do need more carriers, but I also need to rebuild the current fleet I have to be uh, more relevant in the modern day. And, um, you know, actually properly, you know, pivoting towards a mainly light jet fighter rebuild, or not rebuild, but, you know, jet fighter rebuild. Um, so, carrier priority is still fairly high. That is still something where I need to probably get more of those by the next war. Next war, I'm probably wanting to look at having, like, 15 fleet carriers, you know, 15, 16 fleet carriers, and hopefully all of them of either modern construction or modernized construction. 
light carrier wise is kind of a medium to low priority not as useful as getting more larger carriers or to refit the uh, older carriers um, although there is some consideration at replacing the uh, sun clue but you know i don't I don't think the light carrier is super needed right now, especially in this uh, current period of uh, jet-based warfare. Um, destroyers, very high. That is a very high priority to get more destroyers laid down. We did not have enough escorts in the last war. We were constantly getting the notices that I needed more destroyers to adequately defend against submarines. And when I have a bunch of capital ships that don't have adequate torpedo defense, we need more destroyers. And that probably means more missile destroyers. Corvette priority is also very high. I need more fleet minesweepers. And honestly, I have now heard an assessment for trade protection or that um, KEs are actually fine for trade protection work. Because originally I'm like, oh, let's not build Corvettes for trade protection work because they get sunk in gun duels with submarines at all time. But um, apparently someone on Discord actually does the math and it's literally just a flavor text thing. Um, the submarines will sink them and trade protection destroyers with the same frequency. It's just the trade protection destroyers get sunk by a torpedo and the um, corvettes get sunk in a gun duel. Um, so, yeah. Corvettes are probably still worth it. Um, or trade protection corvettes are probably still worth it. So, conclusions. And this is actually where I wanted to sit and write stuff down. I'm already... 31 minutes into this. I mean, conclusions, build more destroyers. Just leaving that on, ca you know, capital. Build corvettes. I think that's a solid conclusion. Modernize carrier fleet. Expect to be modernizing um... A good chunk of the heavy surface. Maybe not modernizing, refitting a good chunk. Yeah. Maybe refitting a good chunk of the heavy surface ships. Um, pivot. Or pivot towards an all. Uh, all. Jet carrier air wing. I think that's going to need to be important. I'm going to say expect expect helos, not helios. Expect helicopters. Um, that was one of the things I brought up is that eventually we are going to get helicopter technology. <coughs> and. More. Missile DDs in in terms of rebuilds. I think that's one of the other things, or one of the other things I need to consider. I think, yeah, I think these are the conclusions about what I need to be doing in the next six years, as well as um acquire super carrier. I have spelled that wrong. Now I have spelled it correctly. And I think that does it for, uh, you know, the list. You know, what the priorities are. So, back, you know, back to the actual game itself. I, uh, n you know, first step is I need to save money. Anything in West Africa needs to pull back, first of all. Move ship uh, back into Northern Europe. I have no intention of uh, scrapping anything here. Um, I'll keep everything split between the Med and Northern Europe right now. Because um, I really can't afford to do much about that this turn. But, you know, we'll see. God, yeah, I don't have that many uh, Corvettes in a good role. I'm honestly really happy with the Lefantistic... Jesus Christ, these have been in existence for one war. How many battles did they take a part in? Well, good destroyers. I'll give, I'll give, you know, I will give those destroyers a lot of credit for what they did. Um, 
All right. So, Mothball. What are these guys doing? Yeah, Mothball all these. So, yeah, peak class destroyers are going to have to be removed. Um, removed down. Uh, let's halt repairs on her. Okay, there we go. Halted repairs. Um, didn't save quite as much funds as I was expecting, but it certainly has saved uh, some funds. And some uh, some of these ships also do have to pull back to uh, Northern Europe. Um, for now, I can mothball Sully. And is there anything else that needs mothballing? If it's slowed down enough... Now I can mothball these ships as well, because they are going to get rebuilt, and I just am going to halt repairs on uh, some of those other ships. If it's slowed down by two knots, I think i just mothball it for now. Or, you know, consider rebuilding. Um, yeah, I'll just let that one... Uh, you know what? Halt it, halt it. I, the Tempete class is, or the Tempet class is probably going to have to get refit, so, um, yeah, I'll just halt that one. Um, and they're also starting to slow down, but the speed for these really doesn't matter that much, so I can, I could throw them into the Mothball fleet to save a little bit more money. Air groups wise, and, you know, if we want to ch quickly check what did well, oh, that's a good fighter group. And, uh, Ville de Perry. Yeah. Alright. So the first thought is... Hmm. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna just start disbanding some stuff at some of the bases here. So if I'm looking at all the bases... Let's reserve these. Airbase Zara. So Zara... Zara has... A, are these... That's an entire air wing. At Zara. That was an extra air wing I must have been holding on to. Anyway, I think I'm going to just disband all the units at Zara. Um... Yeah, I'll start moving stuff into the um, unassigned group. I know one of these airbases, Safax, has a uh, uh, stuff, so I'm going to move all those into reserve. Yeah, let's move all of the ones at Tunis and Algiers into reserve. Yeah. I'll hold on to those for for now. Yeah, okay. These will be the land-based squadrons that I keep, I think. Although, you know, Nice has some... Um, move to reserve. I'll keep Nice's uh, patrol aircraft there. And I'm, I'm not going to keep full activation. So those... That's the group I'm moving to reserve, and then... In the unassigned pool, disband all those air units at once. And look, I'm actually getting money back now. Um, Alright. So, carrier air wing wise. Um, okay. Move that unit into reserve. Actually, no. No, you go back to the carrier, because I'm going to move stuff into reserve to get rid of it. So that, that one gets to stay. Move all those into reserve. Um, so I think on these guys, I do want to keep like this, that as the template. Um, but I'm trying to decide which of these units to uh, actually preserve and which ones to not. So, um... 
Here, I'll disband that dive bomber unit. I'll disband that dive bomber unit. Eh, screw it. Disband all those. Those do have some kills, so all of Fudre's will get disbanded. Um, I'm going to disband the dive bomber group on Sirocco. I'll keep the other light jet fighters units around on those uh, carriers. Just, uh, you know, keep enough light, light jet fighter squadrons around. They do have some kills. Okay. So I want to keep squadrons which actually did stuff around, if that makes sense. But uh, probably convert them over to... Uh, light jet fighters if needed. Um, and then these ones in the unassigned pool automatically get disbanded. So, yeah, if I'm looking at the rest of these, so, you know, these get held on to for now. Um, probably don't need as many specials or that many special squadrons especially given that these carriers are going to have to undergo a uh, refit to a jet conversion so i am going to just get rid of their special squadrons right now there's what i'm going to keep that fighter group around and i'm going to convert it into um light jet fight or retrain them on light jets cuz they did well um, that dive, those dive bombers did score a number of bomb hits. Um, actually here. So, I'll move those to the unassigned pool. I'll move these to the unassigned pool for now. And then I'll take a look at what I want to save and what I want to get rid of. So I think, um, you get saved... That's probably... Yeah, this that group gets disbanded. Um, I think this group will get disbanded. Two kills, two bomb hits. Um, I'll decide on those later. Uh... I think you get saved. I'll save you. Then actually go to the unassigned pool and decide what I want to get rid of. Uh, yeah, I'll save that one too. Those other units from Yon will get saved. I'll come back on the, or come back to those. Yeah, no, I think I think these other ones from Lahav get disbanded. Um, Fosh, yeah, that light jet fighter gets saved. Uh, I'll, I'll save that one, I'll disband this one, and then I'll go to the unassigned pool and actually disband a number of the other groups. So of these, I'm just going to disband Dauphine's air complement. Um, those dive bombers will get saved, but, you know, converted over to light jets. Um, yeah. Okay, carrier-wise, um, that one on Rochambeau's going away. I think these dive bombers are going away. The rest of these I will move to the unassigned pool and then decide on which uh, squadrons I want to keep. Um, you go away. Those dive bombers go away. Those are some really good light jets on Pin Levee, though. Those squadrons had a lot of uh, work done. And then on Jafra... Um, yeah, I'm just going to disband her entire air complement. She's probably going to need a significant rebuild, too. Alright, so of all of these, I have some special squadrons here. I'm going to disband that uh, light jet fighter. Um, change role. Yeah, I think you become change role. Hey, jet. 
Oh, it's not changing. For some reason. Okay, so if I'm looking at the fighter or the light jet fighter squadrons, uh yeah, I'm gonna disband. Yeah, I'm gonna disband these guys. Oh, that's a lot of the fourteens. I think I'll still have enough for like a carrier though. And then I'll you know, I can reconstruct them next war. I think I will be needing to fully reconstruct the squadrons next war, because I might get jet attackers and I Wonder if I'll get heavy jet fighters or not. Um, change role. Oh, it's not letting me. How about this? Um, I move all of you to... Try that again. I move all of you to an airbase, say, Marseille. Change roll, light jet. So, yeah, just going to change the role of all these to light jet fighters and move them all to the unassigned pool. Okay, that gives me a reasonable amount of monthly balance to. Okay. Wait a minute, I forgot to talk about subs. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm looking at the subs. It is a mind-laying sub, so I'll probably keep her around. Yeah. I should probably get more submarines. So, yeah, let's lay down, like, four subs right now. Um, you know... I'll lay down another fort. Uh, ju just to kind of rebuild the submarine force so that I'm not having to uh, deal with it as much. I do think I will prioritize for the next war either Germany or Italy again. Because, um, you know, I do want Italian territory. I kind of want some German territory. And I think right now it is... It is very important that I design a new destroyer, and I'm actually going to start with this by opening the... Well, I would say I'll start with this by opening the Le Fantastique class. I will. Um, I want to take a look at my tech again. The missile tech. Yeah, okay. That's what we have. Um, and if I want to look at light forces and torpedo warfare, we have destroyers up to 3,000 tons. Okay, cool. So, let's pick a new destroyer name. Um, yeah, I could do the Mogador class. Uh, Propulsion-wise, do I have gas turbines yet? I I do not. Um, I'm also considering waiting f to uh, get gas turbines to make some of the improvements I want to make. Well, they didn't have radar fire control. Interesting. Okay. So. I need to think about how to actually go about doing this. Okay. So let's cut the secondary guns down. Do not get a helipad yet. I will go up to a quintuple torp launcher. Clear are the Tershback graphics. Um, although I think those were... Actually, no, just clear all the graphics. Clear the superstructure. This is going to be a, a whole new ship design. Um, I do like the auto-loading 6-inch guns. That Those have done, those have done me good service. Uh, but I do want to try to get that radar limit up. And missile tube wise, you do need full missile tubes. I might need to go 32 knots. Okay, yeah, diesel is definitely the best right now. 
Yeah, I think I'm going to have to go 32 knots with this ship design. Um, and then adjust the anti-aircraft guns down. Hmm. Yeah, I cannot get everything I want on this, can I? That top side load? What's it all being eaten by? Okay, I think that's the cut down I need to do. Okay, so... Line effect damage control and seaworthiness. Um, Topside equipment limit exceeded. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to accept it as a uh, drawback to this vessel. So, yep. Top side limit. We're we're exceeding it. Oh, just a little bit. Screw it. Um, I'm going to look up list of French destroyers, because I kind of want to see what they were laying down around 1950 for uh, possible inspiration. Um... So, probably looking at the T-47 class here. Okay, yep, T-47 class destroyer. Ah, uh, images. Just bring them up on the other monitor to get, to get a rough idea of uh, what I'm trying to build. Um, we're not going to have a helipad yet. And, uh, you know, missile tube-wise, I have a very interesting idea. Do I have him fire over the forward launcher? Or the forward gun? Or do I have the forward gun fire over them? Let's say I put him over... Let's say I put him there. Okay. Hmm. Because I know that the historical ones I'm looking at really don't. Oh yeah, okay, I see what they do with the historical one. That's where they put the uh, hedgehog launcher, which this would have. Um, actually, here, let's screw it. This is gonna be this class is just gonna be cursed. So. Main missile tubes are going to fire over the uh, forward gun. I might position the forward gun just a touch more forward. Okay, it's been a while since I've actually gotten to uh, design a ship in uh, Rule the Waves. I don't like how that's looking. It's a destroyer. You need, you know, you need finer lines on it. And uh, yes, I am still sticking to my guns and uh, going going with the meme that France does. Uh, you know, a little bit of tumble home. Even, even in this era. Oh, maybe I'll mess with the, uh... Well, I have an idea. Let's mess with the hull form a little bit.
Uh, move that maybe up there. Okay. I wanted to mess with the hall form and make it just a little bit more distinct compared to the uh, other destroyer classes I have. Okay, so I'm thinking, what if I do like this? I'm going to go here and then kind of cut across. Hmm. Do that. Uh, you know what? I'm going to bring this down a lot, like to here. Uh, a very questionable idea. If I do this and then this. as a uh, one superstructure layer and let me now position these all right so set position of those at some point you know i am going to have to go towards uh, helipads and this ship doesn't exactly have a lot of weight left over for them unfortunately but, you know, the whole the whole point of this vessel is to just start lobbing missiles at the enemy. This is this is a missile destroyer through and through. Um, but you know, with decent decent firepower, although she's gonna have some minor yeah minor deficiencies due to that top side weight limit exceeded to try to get that second medium anti aircraft gun on there. Um, okay, so that's layer two on. God, it's been so long since I've gotten to do this. Uh, okay, so let me add in some visuals here. Now I want to do the grate. Actually, no, I want a circle and then a grate. Although, eh, let me get the deck grate in first. Smallest one I can get. Nope. Actually, it might have been a different one. Might might have been like a deck vent eight. Yeah. Okay. Nope. The great rectangular ten foot. Yeah, that's probably it. And then I need a circle to go under that. Let's try a 10 foot medium gray. All right now, mirror that, remove you, remove you. And then that's kind of the uh, hedgehog launcher. Um, although I will set the rest angle of that all the way back, move the circle forward. Uh, move this forward. Okay, cool. Um, and then I do want to add, I do want to add funnels on, but I think that will be a later visual. Okay, so I'm looking at the, this class of destroyer in my other monitor. Um, it would be really nice to get a high quality image. Um, and as I was looking at it later in life, as they had been uh, refit at some points. So, Not really, let's do like this. I mean, this is going to need to have a rangefinder on it. Here's what I'm going to do this. 
Cut across. Come back over. That. Cut across again. Oh. Cut across again. Come back over. And down to there. Got a bit. Range finder will go roughly there. Then. Then you get this kind of back section, which is uh, probably where, you know, a funnel is vaguely going to go. All right. Um, then structure four. And we're going to be like the major aft superstructure bits. So... Um, just the, you know, funnel here, funnel here, probably. Yeah, I'll just kind of go around those. Uh, is this really what I want to be doing that to right now? Yeah, okay, actually, let's, uh, let's do this. Okay then, um, I don't know why that's so dark. Maybe I'll shift two down to be a little darker. Okay, yeah, I like that, I like that look a little more. Okay, I... Oh, I no, I'm going to save 5 and 6 for now. Okay, so stack teardrop shape destroyer maybe. A little small actually. That's very small. I don't actually think I want to go with teardrop shaped stacks. I want to do an oval. How big is that? That's pretty big. I kind of like that shape though. Let's try maybe an 11 foot. Uh, that's maybe a little bit too small. I'm going to go with a 12 foot. I go with 12 foot. How long has it been since I've done this? It's been a while. Okay. I need to add a range finder. So I'm going to add a. I would say a circle and a rangefinder, but let me add the rangefinder first, then add the circle, and then work it out. So, rangefinder 10 foot is the smallest one I can get. Um, so, that's a 10 foot circle right there, medium gray. Uh, let's go with like a 14 foot medium. Eh, is that good enough? Okay, I think that works okay for the rangefinder I want to put on this thing. Um, now I'm going to need a mast. Mast tripod for destroyers. Let's do a medium. Uh... I'll do a mass trap. I, I need to go one size smaller, I think. A 
Okay, put the mass there. I'll maybe adjust the position of the guns. Yeah, I will. I'll set the guns a little bit more further back. Okay. I'm going to get, like, a really small circle, like a six foot. Put that further back on the mast, and then do... I probably don't want another rangefinder in the mast. Um... What was it? What was it I wanted to put on there? Radar. I thought there was. I know there is a radar. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Again, it's been forever since I've done this. Oh, antenna. You get the parabolic antennas, so... You get the parabolic antennas, the other thought is that you could do a non-parabolic uh, non antenna with the um, depth charge racks. Which is, I think, what I'm going to do. Okay, yeah, I kind of like how that looks. Um, I still have, like, two sets of lines to um, work with here. Uh, which... I don't know exactly where I'm going to put. Maybe, maybe a little bit more superstructure around the funnels. Okay, let's do another let's do a smaller mass tripod. Put it there. Um on this one I'm gonna need boats on this somewhere, aren't I? Actually, this is where the crane. This is where the yeah. This would be where the crane on the historical class would be. I guess the boats are on the historical class a little bit further back. Like but the torp tubes would be like here-ish. Maybe I'll put a crane like. Yeah, maybe I'll put a crane here. Crane 1? Nope, I'm going to do Crane 2. A little big. They're a smaller version. I really hope that there's a smaller version. I forgot to put anchor chains on her. Hold on, let me do that. bigger. Yeah, okay, that'll work. Um, and do need a break water. Let's try a 25 foot, maybe. Yeah, that looks. Yeah, okay, that looks good. And actually, I will want to get another break water back here. Just trying to decide where do the boats wind up going. I think what I need to do is I need to move these guns down. Those guns need to go there. Graphics-wise, that would be layer 4. So...
Actually, you know what? I'm just going to completely undo layer 4 and redo it again. So, layer 4, I think, needs to start there. Go back. There. Let's say this, that, 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 and then that. That's the new layer four. Um, means I'll probably need to do some more under here then. That does allow me to put boats in an actually uh, reasonable spot. Okay. Let me get a new crane in there. I swear there was a smaller version of the... I don't know if there was a smaller or a larger version of the crane, actually. But I think there was a separate version of it. How about catapult rotating? Ooh, actually, hold on. I have a dumb idea. That will be our crane. I'm going to set it at 178 degrees. Uh, no, no. 185, let's try that. 5 degree offset. And then set that about there. Um, mess tripod. Mirror that. Remove the older one. Okay, I'm I'm content with how this is looking so far. Okay, so I want to get what shape do I want back here? Like I want a triangle. There aren't really good triangle pieces, at least not for this size. Like, there are, you do have the CV elevators, but those are big. Um, I guess the prop guards exist, but probably not. Oh, the scaffolding crane. There we go. That would be what I was looking for. So it's under two different names, but oh well. You do have the stack teardrop shapes, but... Interior. Hmm. I don't think I can get away with using the stack for what I want. Range finders, you might be able to find something for. I mean, I have all my custom stuff here. I'm not really wanting to make more of that. What does the mine rail do? Oh, it's the same piece. And there might be some CV bar stuff which you could use, but... I don't know. I don't want... Well, like a big... No. I do want a parabolic antenna up here, but not that specifically. Um... What happens if I put this on the tank? There's probably a use for this piece on a boat now that I'm looking at it. Not quite what I want there, but I'm looking at that and I'm thinking there might be a use for that uh, land-based tank. Field artillery base. Okay, that's the piece. That's actually a perfectly usable piece for what I'm uh, looking for here, of trying to get this to a little bit more of a triangular shape. Because then I can put in parabolic antenna on top. Maybe that's a little too big. Oh, 
Okay. I'm pretty happy with how that aft mast looks. Okay, so now I can do a little bit more um, structure work on this. So I'm going to do like that. Let that go down there. Um, what I'll do, I'll kind of have a little bit of an extension from those turrets. But I'm going to bring this up a bit, then back down so it kind of, uh, you know, merges with the funnel a little better. I'm going to use that to create like a little platform back here. And then structure six is going to be back here more. Um, actually, no, hold on. Let me move. Yeah, parabolic antenna a bit. Okay. So structure six, I think, needs to just build out this funnel. Or build out some structure around the funnel. Um, okay, so I'm going to do like this, that, out, loop in, go this way. Uh, about that. Um, I'm going to move the last point down. There we go, cool. Um, okay, so now I do need to get boats in there, so I'm going to do like a nice 28 foot with divisions. Oh, that's too big. Um, how about... 25 foot ends? No, that one's always big too. That's like as big as the 28 foot divisions. I'll do a 25 with divisions. Um, probably about there. Maybe a regular 25 foot, like on the other side. Okay. Um,. And I think I'm going to want, hmm, a couple things I consider putting on this still. What does the LA or the light anti-aircraft one look like? So that's what it looks like. It's kind of like similar to that. I was thinking about whether to put that on a mast or not. But I don't think that's a good call. I do want more superstructure back here, though, is what I'm currently considering. I'm thinking just like a rectangle. What about a solid large rectangle? Nope, too big. Yeah, the rectangle square, let's try maybe a 14 foot, uh, too big. Rectangle square, 12 foot maybe? I'm gonna get some, I'm gonna get a couple circles. So let's do maybe like a, uh, do I want a 10 foot medium gray or an 8 foot? I'll go an 8 foot circle. Then I'm in a nice circle, six foot. And I'm going to put that like here ish. I'm 
trying to think where would like a phalanx go on this if we're having something like that. Although I can probably just do that with um you know these. Uh set rest angle to one eighty. Decrease or change the sponson radius, so Actually, no, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to have both these on the forward broadside of the ship. Rest angle to zero, okay. So those will be like the phalanx, or the phalanx equivalents, or whatever whatever they would be at this time. Just to check, is this... Yeah, that's the most effective uh, use of getting the ESW value up. I feel like there's one more... Yeah, I do want to add one more thing. That's going to be just a little rectangle. What's the smallest rectangle I can get? Maybe not quite the smallest one. Second smallest one I can get. And I'm going to put that like right here. Okay. There we go. I think that's the new destroyer class. Nope, top time limit exceeded. Fine. It'll take one month to uh, start laying them down, and I'm going to need to get a lot of destroyers. Um, technically, I do want to get a uh, Corvette, too. Um, let me assign a new commander to uh, someone, so, because I do have this above average here I've been saving. Um, oh, don't accelerate her. Just normal construction pace on uh, Henri the Fourth. Ah, do I go next turn? I'm going to save at the very least with the Mogador class now design. The question is, do I go next turn right now, or do I start laying down... No. No, I think it's better if I lay down a bunch of destroyers right now, and then later... No, 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 I think I do want to design a new ship, but it's basically just going to be... Uh probably like a copy or an yeah probably just a copy of these the Atlantic class um fire control is not the best available who cares um I will go down to three inch dual purpose auto loaders so they'll be a little bit more expensive Do not install my best radar let's fix that I don't really want you actually wasting a bunch of radars, though, so radar limit 3. You can get radar-directed uh, medium anti-aircraft, though, and I'll cut the light AA off. Um, result of this, though, I will at least give you advanced directors. There we go. Okay, so the Mogador and Heralt class are now designed. Let's go one turn and at least get the first groups laid down. Uh, first carrier needs a new commander. So... I do have an average aviator, but I'll use the above average in charge. Or put the above average in charge. Ignore, 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 ignore. And yeah, I'm going to need a lot of those Mogador class. I think. 
I'm also going to have to decide to increase spying on. Like, it might be worthwhile to spy on Britain a little bit, because they're going to have a lot of tech. Uh, okay, awesome. Gradual. Total enemy aircraft shot down, 210. 64% of those were by fighters, 10% by other aircraft, 14% by heavy, heavy anti-aircraft, 8% by medium anti-air, 4% by light anti-air, and none by SAMs. So the interesting thing is that heavy anti-air seems to still be pulling its weight, even in the age of radar-guided medium anti-aircraft. Um, yeah, but fighters do seem to be very, 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 very important right now. And I'm going to wait on getting a supercarrier until the dock size is uh, fully built out. I think I just immediately need, like, eight of those under construction as uh, fleet minesweepers. But... Okay, I'm going to start by getting Mogador laid down herself. Although, honestly, I'm going to get another four of these. Just increase the minesweeping, or increase the mines, or yeah, increase the fleet minesweeping count. Um, and then I think, th yeah, I think next episode is going to be, hey, let's rebuild one of our existing destroyers. So, um, there is a second historical Mogador class, that would be Volta, and then after this I'm just going to let them use random names. And I think immediately it's going to be, you know, construct eight of these things. Um... And I do have some more ships in the active fleet that can be brought down to the reserve fleet to save a little bit more money. Can you move back to, like, Northern Europe? Because you're not really needed in Southeast Asia. I don't know what you're doing over there. With everything I have on, you know, everything here I have on Foreign Station. Like, all this should probably cover it. Yeah, I think I think next episode's priority is going to be on uh, throwing some destroyers into the rebuild pile. And yeah, now I have uh, all these other destroyers that are refitting. Doc, I'm going to wait until the dock size finishes improving. So uh, we should have uh, 66,000 tons before I uh, start getting another aircraft carrier. Although... Let me check something. Auto design a fleet carrier. Okay, so if I go 46,000 tons, I can do that. 48,000, I can do that. Uh, okay, so I cannot actually design carriers larger than 48,800 tons. So I... Might focus on uh, laying down a new aircraft carrier next turn, like a new super carrier at uh, that tonnage, unless I think I'm really, really close to a uh, new tech. Although, you know, I'm only two away from a dock size increase, and I'm one away from Lafayette, so maybe I'll wait till then just to get the funding to do it. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching. This has been me, No Name Moment 7 Spore, with Rule the Waves 3. Um, links to my Discord as well as the community Rule the Waves Discord are down below if you want to join either of those. You can. Join my Discord for notifications on the videos if the damn bot ever works. And uh, you can join the community Rule the Waves Discord to hang out and chat about Rule the Waves. It's probably where I'm most active. Um, and outside of that, I do have to once again thank Matrix, Slytherin, and Naval Warfare Simulations for the free copy of this. I will see you all next time. Bye! I'm going to make this exactly 1 hour 30 minutes.